C. Poetry. B. Action. Read. Verb. Read. Caption. Close. Mouths don't get fed, so scream till they close. Cast it. Be fed. Up. Stream where the mercury's mine. Closed crucible is crucial to the mercury's rise. Pressure bust pipes, lids whistling steam. Pot calls the kettle pot until the kettle believes. They say we contain a multitude of cognitions, pixelating our windows, throwing shade on our dissonance, lowercasing our eyes while bookcasing our tendencies, trying to make me believe that batteries equal energy. The old bait and switch, selling takes the free concerts, dozen roses, but the bee's a casualty of the gardener. So we go green and get envious of the womb. Men fluent in influence, envious of the moon. Put their boot in their face, plant a flag in their back. Now they're coming home to roost, whites are already cracked. Blue apron your meals, pinch of seasoning wrap. Separated ingredients, individual plastic. Save a minute of prep, save a trip with the transit. Two dashes of salt, a thousand years for the package. My cousin was shot, getting robbed for a dime bag. Two spoonfuls of salt, chopped and wrapped with a toe tag. But that little bag will live forever and float in the midst of an ocean with all the rest we dispose. The rest of the salt, all the rest of the poetry. The rest of the pot fills the kettle with mercury. The rest of the men filling wounds with their flags. Sea turtles home to nest, egg choked in a bag. Thank you. Nice bright and sunny poem to start. <laughs> so, if you notice, uh, this is typed by a computer. Uh, I'm reading off of the version that I hand wrote all my poems out because I always thought that my voice doesn't sound like that looks. And so it's weird to me to read my own poems when they're written not by me. It's weird, I know. <laughs> Font is the clothes your words wear. The emperor has no voice. The instant a balloon pops, helium is poof. I shot the seraph and left the emperor for dead. The instant a tree falls, it is everything it may become. You are the clothes your you wears. Your life is the language you speak. Such a long tongue. Your mouth is my favorite font. Right. So the other one I showed you looked very neat. This is what most of them look like. Uh, So there are two types of people in this world. Okay, there are those who pack the night before and those who pack 20 minutes before. <laughs> those who curse the subways and those who appreciate living in a place with subways at all. Now there are those who want to be buried raw in the ground under an avocado tree so 10 years later surviving friends can gather and enjoy a, jol enjoy a bowl of mason guacamole and the rest. There are two types of people, okay? There are flowers and there are bees. There are beans and grounds, people and still. Three types, in fact, okay? There are those who are dead, those who are not dead yet, and the rest. There are two types of music. There's the note and the rest. There are two types of rest. There's the kind I'm capable of and the kind that exists. There are two types of existence, one and zero, the types of God, but there is the eye, and there is the beholder, and somewhere in between are two types of beauty, okay? There are people, of which there are eight billion types, and gods of an equivalent number, and they grab their partners, do -si do swing them around until it's all gray matter and pink spirals and two types of people. Who knows? And who cares? And they're both me. But on the flip side, you really only need to know two things. One thing, completely, and how to build a metaphor. But on the other hand, there are two types of bills. There's the ones I've got and the ones I've paid. There's two types of survival, right? The kind that eats people alive and the kind I'm lucky enough to do by default. But hey, everybody's got to fend for themselves, right? There are two types of worlds in people. 
Earth and the Still. Now some of us like to romanticize the moon, but it looks to me like death circling us all the time. I stared a whole month, the moon blinked once. As it does. But I didn't. Pack anything for this. Do you know how weird it is to be surrounded by all types of people with sticks out freezing their marshmallows over you? Because I'm my only one always starting fires, so I get it. The kind of person that accepts both kinds of you just want to belong. Like when I see wood, it belongs on fire. When I see bees, they belong on flowers. Alright, it's like football. 80,000 different types of people gather to briefly become the same kind of person. To look out at a world they recognize and understand together. Where the lines are drawn where they belong. Both sides playing the same game. Does that sound like any place you know? Yeah, me neither. Man, I just want to be the guac. Let the chips fall where they may. Frozen some more. Because everybody's got to zen for themselves, right? Thank you. I see John every day. Even when he's not around. Even when he's gone or dead. Like he said, reborn and born again are two games that don't beef. Just sit on opposite ends of my grandfather's living room. I annoyed John. I got a black and blue eye. I got a bloody nose. I got a busted lip. The water's not cold enough to drink. The water's warm enough to get thrown in my face. John and I share a bed for eight years. John bruises my arms for eight years. I call it crime. Call it bonding, double-sided tape, plastic backboard in the hallway. I get punched in my face. I get loved in my face, double-sided tape. I go down the stairs to pee out the window. I go down the stairs to cry out the window. Tears fell down six flights. I fell down six flights. I never broke, just splashed, never cried, just laughed. I wrote a suicide note to John. John laughed. I wrote a joke to John. I laugh at loose tooth. I laugh at myself. I wait to get ripped out of my own mouth. I am most afraid of God. I am most afraid of John. I learned how to spell love in blood. I see John in my grandfather's living room. Both of them are gone. One more than the other. One day I will never come back here. These dark places, these mouths full of dead laughter, this mouth full of love, blood, and if I fight back, it'll just keep happening. It just keeps happening. I cry to our mother. I wrap God out. God got in trouble. God knew this would one day happen. God laughs. God killed himself. God born again. God both games. Now he on the roof. Knives come out. He danced with himself so he not really alone. God run away. God on a poster, it say missing, it say help us find God, it say call this number if you find God, and God showed up to John's friend's house, and John's friend called the cops on God, then John got admitted to a psych ward. I visit him, I am covered in double-sided tape. John hugs me, God hugs me, Arms wrap around me. Arms ending in fists. Uh, so that first poem, um, it's about my brother John. Um, my brother John was diagnosed with schizophrenia uh, six years ago. And um, Though, like, our relationship was rocky when we were kids, um, after his diagnosis um, and after uh, we learned that he was schizophrenic, he became a lot more sweeter, became a lot more patient, became a lot more kind, right? Because, like, um, I don't know about in Romania, but in America, when somebody hears that somebody else is schizophrenic, they're like, oh, your brother's a murderer. And I'm like, no, like my brother doesn't kill people. 
right? And I'm like, I'm like, my brother thinks he's Jesus, so like, he runs around New York City and he prays with people and like gives people hugs and tells them, tells them that they're perfect and all that. And so, um, yeah, my brother is still like one of the like is still one of the most important people in my life and like um, one of my biggest inspirations. And like, you know, I don't think like I feel like a lot of people will turn my brother into his diagnosis rather than my brother so when i'm writing about him it's like yeah like things are hard but like this is still my guy like i still love him so like don't talk crazy about my brother <laughs> um so this next poem is called learn your song um and it starts with a quote um by morgan parker uh, sorry for the kid who's in the room when i hear that word. um since I thought I'd be dead by now, everything I do is fucking perfect. Period. I survive. That's all there is to say about the trampling, a forest, or some grand ecosystem of machetes hidden in cheeks. What a mouth. The beast of the beast. When there isn't oxygen, there is. It's just poison. Everything I am can kill me or give another reason to operate from uneducated fear. I'm from where love is. Bones don't weigh a death. I needed to have a word with all the gods that failed me. They wear masks and vernacular like those whose caskets I've prayed next to. They feed me pitted pomegranates full of smoke. There are no angels, just good people and the memories they become. Press your wrist to your ears, slow the world down, leave hope and learn your song. All I have are my lungs to breathe, my mouth to speak, my legs to proceed, and my arms to make my enemies fall. All enemies I've been fall now. I will not hurt myself, but I will save myself even if it hurts. Oh, yeah. oh, my body is learning to heal and runs on tactical forgiveness. The ones who lie to me, about me, on me, have been forgiven. How the wind forgives the large blade swung through it. How the blade forgives itself for being mishandled and chooses only to understand those who need weapons to feel bigger than their own body. An overwhelming space. I burn and there is no smoke. I excavate. I'm wrestling skeletons out of my mouth. I'm catching up with who I want to be. I'm saying day after day I live, the harder it'll be to kill me. <laughs> I like refuse of losing my voice to prove a point, to be heard, born, male, black, Dominican. I've been taught to take up space, but no one ever told me that I could be a garden, could be soft and smell good and bloom at volumes. People usually walk past, usually lavender, mango, cocoa, and pink sugar oils are how people remember me, how the air became an antidote, became the search for the scent that filled their lungs with flowers with what reminds us we too can be a home for breathing and blossoming joy. And the heart hugs that follow, they require us to hug with the left sides of our body so that our hearts face each other while we take a deep breath in and exhale together. <sighs> Exhaling everything that tried keeping us from being here in this hug, this holy place that has no heaven except for the other person. For this intimacy is in no need of romance, in no need of a false future promise to one another, but the promise of this hug ending when we are both ready to release each other back into the world, back to sidewalks burning with ghosts, and the promise of some danger. And some gardens are unlike anything that you've ever seen.
but you never asked what had to die for you to be this captivated. To be a garden is to take up space hoping others will call you home. Call on rainy days too. Days when clouds are all so you forget to look west, forget to think light for its time, bright and generous, now retreating into invisibility instead of staying where they feel unloved, where I will return. To be unloved is to have been loved incorrectly, loved enough to believe the lie of love being all I need. All the failed gods in my stomach are dead and screaming for tenderness, screaming like my father. A garden ended at the root at his bipolar, his depression, his alone. And I blame his absence for not letting me show him how to water himself into what heals. What kind of son am I to think what is my father's isn't mine, isn't genetic. And I carry his loneliness that isn't loneliness, but the choice to ignore the world. And in my book, um, but like, I'm just going to say uh, groovy smoothies. And see, uh, that is not the one. <laughs> groovy smoothies. Yes. Can you imagine like a smoothie, like just like doing this? Like, you're like, yeah, can I have that uh, that uh, thing with the avocado, spinach, pineapple, bananas, and ginger? And they're like, yeah, here you go. And it's like, okay, what's up? I'm a smoothie. Alright, I'm gonna suck on Alright, cool. Alright, Totally has nothing to do with this one. Pops dead for months. Remembering Pops taught me to float on my back. Watching moonlight on my Delta flight after leaving a Balan's casket with Abuelos in Santiago, Dominican Republic. I'd be lying if I didn't feel their hands stacked and securing my neck and spine. I got this ease with grief. Cry all I need to, not all I want to. Deep breaths, cups brimming with water. I feel furthest from Abuelo. The God I had then ain't the ancestors I have now. I keep baby's breaths for everyone I hold in the heaven of my brain, gorilla tape and lining the sarong my sister Monica gifted me. I tell you, if a flower could be a casket, my therapist helps me see I got things, things about family and consistency. How love should have and should look. Everything isn't my fault. I love people to see what brilliant light love could have made of me. All I am is from grief, defense mechanism, joy and smile and laugh and dance and hope. Thinking about getting a baby's breath tattooed under my eye. Imagining how fresh it'll look every time I cry thinking about how it's been four months since Pops died and the four ulcers they found in Mommy's stomach the morning of Abuela Ana's viewing and how Mommy couldn't come to Santiago to see her parents be together again. I tell you, if death isn't what makes a family, Thank you.